A well-made ship will last for a long time, but it won't last forever. Once its sailing days are over, a ship will usually be towed to a place where it can be scrapped and its materials used for some other purpose. Sometimes that other purpose might even be making new ships. Not every ship follows the same life cycle, though. Some of them simply end up abandoned, either through mishap or dumping, and we've got some surprising examples of that for you in this video. The Duke of Lancaster has been moored on the Welsh coast for four decades after plan after plan about what to do with the old vessel fell by the wayside. She was once a first-class passenger ferry and cruise liner, beginning life in 1956 and carrying passengers to and fro destinations in Ireland, Scotland, and mainland Europe. Her first-class status ended in 1978, when a Liverpool-based business bought the Duke of Lancaster and decided to open it as a dry-docked party boat with a shopping center hotel and fairground rides aboard. Those plans didn't meet with the approval of the local council, and so the party boat idea never reached its full potential. The frustrated owners cut their losses in the mid-1980s and abandoned the ship. From there, it was sold to a new owner called John Rowley, who wanted to restore the Duke of Lancaster to its former glory, but ran into similar legal issues with local authorities. He gave up after 30 years of trying in 2012, after which point the derelict vessel became a target for graffiti artists. Urban explorers gained entry to the ship in 2017 and found that it's still full of mint condition arcade machines from the golden era of gaming. The wreck of the USS Sachem is sometimes called the Cincinnati Ghost Ship, which is a little inaccurate because she's stuck in a creek just over the border in Kentucky. It's hard to get a sense of her former beauty by looking at the state she's in today, but she was considered a luxury yacht when she launched in 1902. Back then, she was simply known as the Celt. It was when she was called up to serve in the First World War that she got the name USS Sockham. After the war, she spent time as a fishing boat and then re-entered military service in 1941 as a training vessel. With that re-enlistment came another new name, the USS Fenikite. Even more new names were to come. She spent the 1950s as a party boat called Captain Martin and then became a tourist vessel in New York City named Sightseer. By then, she'd lost almost every trace of her former glamour and soon became known simply as Circle Line 5. Even with her looks fading, she found fame by appearing in the iconic music video for Papa Don't Preach by Madonna. How she became abandoned after that is unknown, but she's been stuck in this creek for a very long time. Making ships out of concrete might seem like a counterintuitive idea, but almost every nation involved in the Second World War experimented with that idea when standard shipbuilding materials became hard to acquire. America built a whole fleet of them, and the remains of that fleet can still be found floating in the water at Cape Charles, Virginia. They are known locally as the Kip to Peak Concrete Fleet. There are nine of the ships left, all of which are in a state of deep decay. That's not surprising when you consider that they've been here since 1948, when they were written off by the U.S. Navy and then dragged into position to become an artificial barrier around the Chesapeake Bay Ferry Terminal. By this point, they're fairly useless as a barrier because the gaping holes in their sides are wide enough to sail a smaller vessel straight through. Tourists like to come here occasionally and take pictures with the wrecks for their social media profiles, but they put themselves in danger by doing so. The local authorities consider the wrecks unsafe and warn that they could collapse at any moment. If shipwreck spotting is your thing, it might interest you to know that there's a cluster of 15 of them close to the Tangaluma Island Resort in Morton Island, Australia. It looks like a scene from a disaster movie, or perhaps the aftermath of an enormous shipping accident. But there's nothing accidental about the way the ships got here. The state government of Queensland started dragging shipwrecks here in 1963 and continued until 1978, intending the obsolete vessels to become anchorage for newer ships. 
they didn't intend for the Tangaluma shipwrecks to also become home to more than 100 species of tropical fish and other marine life. But it happened anyway. Marine plants and creatures cover the visible surfaces of the vessels so thickly that it's hard to identify them, but they include the Morwong, the Pelican, the Bream, and the Maryborough. That's the oldest of all the ships here, with a history that goes back to 1885. Most of the wrecks here aren't suitable to be visited or boarded by the public, but those four remain open to divers. The coast of Warrington in Virginia, USA has become the accidental last resting place of a ship called the Peter Iredale. There isn't much of it left, but that's not surprising. It's been stuck here since October 1906. The Peter Iredale was on its way to the Columbia River when it ran aground, and it was immediately obvious that she was never going to move again. The force of the impact tore the rear portion of the ship clean away. Her owners considered mounting a salvage operation to reclaim what they could from her materials, but those plans went nowhere. Eventually, they abandoned her and left nature to break apart her battered body. That's taken longer than anyone probably imagined it would at the time. She probably won't last another hundred years, but we're sure the people who saw her 50 years after she was beached thought she wouldn't last another 50. When the tide is out, it's possible to walk right up to the Peter Iredale and climb inside it, which some people do for photo opportunities. We're not sure that we'd recommend anyone watching this should do the same, though, as the wreck looks very unstable. Move across America from Warrington, Virginia to Leland, Michigan, and you'll find the rusty, broken remains of the Francisco Morazan just off the coast of South Manitou Island. It started life as a freighter in Liberia in 1922, so it was already old when it tried to make a journey from Chicago to the Netherlands via the St. Lawrence Seaway in November 1960. It was one trip too many for the vessel. The Francisco Morazan was caught in heavy winds and snow on November 28th and ran aground. The captain, crew, and passengers all made it away safely, but there was no saving the ship. The steel hull is beginning to break down, but until it does, it will continue to serve as a useful shelter for seabirds and a point of interest to divers. In the case of the latter, you'll only find them there during warmer months. Nobody wants to make the same mistake the captain did by trusting the winter weather in Michigan. In truth, there might be no better resting place for her. She was called the Arcadia when she first launched and her journey ended a mere 40 miles away from the Arcadia Dunes and the village of Arcadia. There are plenty of shipwrecks to be found in Homebush Bay at Wentworth Point, Australia, with an emphasis on the bush and homebush because bushes are exactly what you'll find growing in, on, and straight through some of these old wrecks. The largest of them is the SS Airfield, which has what we can only describe as a small forest growing on its back. This area is a commercial and residential suburb today, but in the distant past, it was a successful trading port. The four abandoned freighters rusting away in the water, of which the SS Airfield is one, are a legacy from that time. They've had no purpose to serve since the end of the Second World War, during which they were used to transport oil, coal, and ammunition supplies. They were decommissioned as soon as the war ended and left in their current positions. The fact that the airfield hasn't buckled under the weight of the mangrove trees that grow inside it is remarkable, but it's a steel-hulled ship that was clearly built to last when it launched in 1911. When Hurricane Francis struck the east coast of Florida and the Bahamas in August 2004, it left a trail of devastation in its wake. Part of that trail is the wreck of a ship called La Familia Express. The rusting shell of the vessel is stuck near the Turks and Caicos Islands and already looks like it's been there for well over 17 years. The force of the hurricane tore it from its moorings and set it adrift in the Caribbean Sea, eventually beaching it on the islands. It's now stuck on a reef in just a few feet of water and will never move again. 
This is an inauspicious end for a ship that began its life with the Russian Navy in 1952 as a cargo vessel called Fort Shevchenko. It's been in the Americas since it was sent to Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962, after which it existed without purpose until an islander bought it during the 1990s. It sailed under the flag of Panama and was used as a regional freighter vessel. By then, she was in poor condition and was deemed suitable only for carrying bulk rock. She's now a visual landmark for the area's boaters, but her hull is breaking down rapidly. The HMVS Cerberus should probably have been turned into a floating museum. It is, after all, Britain's only surviving colonial warship. Instead, it's a wreck. The Cerberus was built in Australia in 1870, but she counts as British because Australia was still a British colony back then. She was registered as part of the Victorian Naval Fleet initially, but after the creation of the Commonwealth of Australia in 1901, she became part of the new Royal Australian Navy. She led a charmed life, never once becoming involved in a battle, even during the First World War, and eventually retired out of service in 1924. The fact she avoided direct involvement in the war is down to her being deemed too old even by that point, and so she became a supply ship and floating munitions store instead of sailing into battle. Two years after exiting military service, the Cerberus was scuttled at Half Moon Bay and became a breakwater to stop heavy waves endangering the smaller boats, yachts, and tourists at the nearby Black Rock Yacht Club. Her final end seemed to have come in 1993, when parts of the ship's superstructure suddenly collapsed. But she remains afloat and still proudly sails an Australian flag from her smokestack. The steam trawler Sheraton has been both a fishing vessel and a warship during its time. Now it's little more than a weather-beaten hull on the beach in Hunstanton, England, and it might not even be that for much longer. You'd never guess it from looking at what's left of her, but when she was brand new in 1907, she was considered robust enough to handle the often perilous conditions of the North Sea for fishing. When the First World War broke out seven years later, she was called into duty by the Royal Navy and spent the war years patrolling anti-submarine booms. She was still around by the time the Second World War started, so she was called up a second time and given a six-pounder gun so she could serve as an armed patrol vessel. This time, the ship was retained by the military after the war ended. She got a coat of bright yellow paint and was used as a target ship. She didn't last long in that role. High winds dragged her from her moorings in April 1947 and deposited her on the beach. That's where she's been ever since. There's more than one shipwreck in the world called the Demetrios. So for clarity, our next abandoned vessel is the Demetrios that's rusting away on a beach in Laconia, Greece, where it's been since the 1980s. This is a spectacularly beautiful part of the world if you discount the big, ugly, rusted orange hulk of the forgotten ship. She started life as a freight ship called the Klintholm in Denmark in 1950, but about 10 years later she was bought by a Greek shipping company and received her new name. They moored her in Githio in 1980 and intended to have her repaired, as by then she'd been declared unfit for sailing. Those repairs never came. The vessel broke free of her moorings during bad weather in the area in 1981 and spent a month drifting aimlessly across the Laconian Gulf before beaching itself in Laconia. There are some physical signs that the ship was set on fire after it became beached. That fire might be connected to a persistent rumor that the ship spent its last few years moving illegal cargo between Turkey and Italy, and the criminals involved in the operation wanted to destroy the evidence. The MS Cabo Santa Maria was on a religious mission in 1968 when it ran aground in Cape Verde. It seems that not even working for God can keep a ship safe from disaster. The vessel was carrying cargo, including four new church bells for the Cathedral Metropolitana Nasa Senora Aprecida in Brazil, but never made it to its destination. It wasn't even possible to retrieve the bells from the shipwreck because they sank, 
so the cathedral had to make do without its bells until October 1977. Nobody's quite sure why the vessel ran aground as conditions were calm in the early hours of September 1st when the accident happened. A tugboat was dispatched to try to drag the Cabo Santa Maria free, but she wouldn't budge. Removing the obtainable cargo from the stricken vessel took the best part of the next year, with the work done by the local community in Boa Vista. The bottom half of the ship has since rotted away to little more than a skeleton, but the upper portions hold firm. It's not the best-looking shipwreck you'll ever see, but that hasn't stopped it from becoming a symbol for the island. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!